It was the largest oil spill ever in U.S. waters, nearly 5 million barrels. Studies measure the cost in multiple billions of dollars for the fishing industry, the energy industry, tourism, environmental damage, and we're still trying to learn where all that oil went. Port Fouchon, Louisiana, with the last fragment of Mississippi Delta, a barrier island nine miles long, 200 yards wide, the gulf on the south, a marsh on the north. And John Pardue glances at the weather and then turns back to study the dark, damp gray sand puddled from storm surge last night or from the rain. He's an environmental engineer from Louisiana State in Baton Rouge, and he's looking for oil residue. This island is part of a reserve. He's trying to both help clean it and study the impact of the spill. This is a typical South Louisiana crude oil, an unemulsified liquid oil. And so we have spills typically. What you have is a spill of this kind of oil, a black liquid, which floats on the surface, coats everything that it comes in contact with, and uh, most of what we know about cleaning up oil spills, almost everything is related to this kind of spill. The Torrey Canyon spill in England back in the, in the late 60s, which was really the first major mega spill that happened, happened to be one of these emulsified spills. And this is what uh, MC 250 emulsion looks like. It's a little bit more like peanut butter, uh -huh. wet peanut butter as opposed to a liquid. And this emulsion is stable. It's a mixture of water mixed into oil. Okay, so that happened for a number of reasons, the things that make it stable, the dispersant was applied, it stayed at sea for a long time, and then what came ashore was really kind of a, a wet, kind of a peanut buttery like material, and totally different than the other kind of spills that we have, we've had. This emulsion is stable, it's, you see a little bit of water in there, it's starting to break up a little bit, mm -hmm. but I've had this in this, in this jar uh, since the spill happened, so 18 months, it's completely stable, and so you'll find these little emulsified blobs all over the place out there. When they mix with sand, what they form is kind of a little um, thing that if you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't be sure, you wouldn't think that was a oil. It's essentially oil-free at the surface, okay? It's a very, very light kind of petroleum kind scent. Kind of petroleum but, but, scent. But not... Not overwhelming. Not at all. In any way. When you break it open, then you see kind of like, like a piece of candy, an oiled center. Uh, so this is about 10% oil by weight, huh. okay? But it was partly due to the fact that oil came to the shores of the mulch and created all these things, and these then become buried as sand covers and wind-blown sand causes problems uh, with finding them. And these just, um, we're talking about even up to two weeks ago, the last day I've got some numbers, they were pulling thousands of pounds, 9,000 pounds of these off the beach every day. This is 18 months after the spill. So just massive amounts of sand having to be removed to get these little these little pieces off. And, uh, you know, they don't pose a, um, a risk to human health necessarily, but uh, this, this, this piece of beach, of course, is sea turtles and lots of other wildlife they encounter. And, and, uh, and so they're trying to do as good a job as they can to remove as much as they can. <laughs> 